Hey, welcome to Movie Recap Corner. Today, I'm gonna break down this scary movie from 2019 called Countdown. We have three hours to live. A table at this house party's got a bunch of young folks chatting away. The gals are all into discussing calories. So one of them pulls up this app on her phone to track what you eat. Another one's keen to get it but ends up stumbling upon another one called Countdown while searching. Everyone's curious. And the gal reads out the description saying it predicts when you're gonna kick the bucket. Everyone, except Courtney, is up for turning it into a drinking game. Whoever's got the least time left chugs everything on the table. Courtney's not too thrilled, but she goes along with it, agreeing to the terms and conditions. They take turns, and each person gets anywhere from 60 to 30 years of life. Courtney's showing them she's got just three hours left, and she's looking pretty down. The crew starts teasing her, saying she's gotta play by the game's rules and knock back a drink. Then, her boyfriend Evan swings by, takes one for the team, and downs the drink for her. Later on, they're heading to his car, and he's visibly smashed. Once inside, she's asking him to escort her home on foot, but he's not up for it. She steps out and starts walking, while he's trying to talk her back in. When that fails, he peels out, annoyed. Then, Courtney gets a notification from the app, saying she's violated the user agreement. As she keeps walking, it looks like someone's tailing her. The app's screaming at her that she's got less than two minutes left, so she dashes into her crib, trying to shut the noise up by turning off her phone. Courtney hits the bathroom and starts feeling all jittery, so she peeks behind the shower curtain. After that, she goes for a sip of water, but she hears that curtain rustling again spins around, but something snatches her from above, tossing her onto the shower floor, cracking her noggin. She clocks out when the countdown hits zero. Meanwhile, Evan's caught up in a car wreck, and the spot where Courtney was supposed to be in the passenger seat is totally wrecked. Quinn's stepping off an elevator, pushing a nurse's cart down the hospital hallway. She enters a room, finding a patient who hasn't polished off his lunch. Quinn knows just where to track him down, chilling on a balcony in the hospital's restricted wing. It's Evan. She takes a seat, aiming to shoot the breeze and ease him up for surgery. But he whips out the countdown app, flashing that he's got roughly 19 hours left. Evan spills about the app and his girl, convinced it predicted her death date. He's got this hunch that the app's also got the deets on his surgery demise. Quinn's assuring him to chill about that app and drags him back to his room. They run into Amy, who insists Quinn joins her. The hospital crew throws her a surprise cake bash for acing the nurse's test. While they're munching on cake, Quinn cracks wise about the app and turns out some others have already caught wind of it. They share a laugh when Scott scores more than 50 years on the life clock, and even Dr. Sullivan clocks in with the same. Out of the blue, this dude walks in lugging a gal who's odding. The doc gives her a quick once-over right there on the floor, and Amy hollers at Quinn to grab the kit with the meds to counter what she's on. Amy dishes out the remedy, and boom, the lady comes to. Fast forward, Quinn's clocking out from her shift when she gets hit with an ad for the app. She downloads it, punches in her deets, and agrees to the fine print. The app spills the beans that she's got just over two days left. All of a sudden, Dr. Sullivan strolls into the elevator, laying on the charm, but she's trying to brush him off gently. In the evening, Quinn's kicking back at her crib, wrapping up her nursing paperwork, and she hits a snack, rings up Scott for a hand, and he drops the knowledge that she's got a punch in the deets from her birth certificate. Quinn ain't got it on hand, but she knows where to dig it up. She heads over to her folks' spot. Once there, she's digging through her mom's stash of papers and unearths it from the bottom of the pile. There's a rustle in the closet behind her. And when she cracks it open, there's her sister Jordan, with her dude in tow. He throws on his duds and bounces. But Quinn lays into her sister about the whole scene. Jordan's pretty ticked off about Quinn playing the parent card and not swinging by more after their mom passed. Quinn heads to her room to patch things up and spills about wrapping up her studies. While they're hashing it out, their pops wakes up and comes to give Quinn a warm welcome. He's thrilled to see her and suggests a trip to visit their mom's grave sometime. Fast forward to the next day. Evan's gearing up for his surgery, peeping that he's got about three minutes left. He ducks out, and bam, the app pings him, saying he's breached the deal. Evan catches a glimpse of some grim figure in the mirror, but in reality, there's nobody there. He bolts to the stairwell, but that creepy figure keeps on tailing him. The app keeps buzzing him about the countdown. Stuck in the pitch-dark stairwell, Evan hears footsteps echoing. He flicks on the light on his phone, but he can't spot anyone down the stairs. Evan glances up, thinking he spots Courtney, but it's something else on the prowl, closing in on him. His phone takes a tumble down the stairs. And when the countdown hits zero, so does he. A bit later, Quinn clocks in at work, and Amy breaks the news about Evan. The app clicks in Quinn's memory, and she's visibly unsettled. Quinn heads to Evan's spot, catching her colleague in the process, and volunteers to take over. She grabs Evan's phone, realizing she needs his fingerprint to unlock it, so she ventures down to the basement facility to check out his body. Quinn tries using his thumb to crack the phone open, but it's a no-go. She gives it another shot with his face, 
peeling his eyes open and finally manages to unlock the phone, only to find the countdown's already hit zero. Out of the blue, his hand drops, making contact with her, and she fumbles the phone. When she picks it up, he's turned, eyeballing her. Swiftly, she tucks the body back in the freezer. Quinn checks her phone, clocking less than two days to roll, and the countdown syncs up with the exact hour she's set to rendezvous with her pops and sis at her mom's grave. She rings up her dad, puts the kibosh on their plans. The app buzzes her, rapping about a busted user agreement, just as a shadowy figure flickers in her path. She doubles back, nada. Boom, Dr. Sullivan catches her off guard. He ropes her into helping a patient, but she's wrestling with some machine. She's itching to bolt, but he pulls this awkward attempt at comfort. The doc takes a shot at hitting on her again, she shuts it down, but he's persistent. When she shoves him off, he kinda sorta apologizes. So she hunts down Nurse Amy to spill the beans. Before she can spill, the doc calls for Amy and she misses her chance. The app shoots over another notification. Later that night, Quinn's on a mission to ditch the app, but the delete struggle is real. She goes on a web hunt, digging up info about Courtney. Stumbles upon a video where a chick's going off about the app, claiming she's seeing crazy things, like her departed cousin, out of nowhere. The girl announces her time's up, freaks out, drops her phone, and the comments section insists it's a hoax. Quinn eases up a bit, slams shut her laptop, then gets hit with a vision of Evan no longer among the living. Her phone sends another ping, she tries to smash it, but that countdown keeps on ticking. Quinn slides into her car and catches some ZS right there. Jordan wakes her up in the AM. They head up to her pad, and her sister spots her wrecked phone, clocks the app, and drops the bomb that she's got just one more day on the clock. They banter about it, and Jordan asks to crash since their pops took off on a spur-of-the-moment gig. Quinn declines, and Jordan storms out. The app beeps again, and she nicks her finger on the busted screen. Later, she's at a shop, snagging a new phone. Quinn pops it open before the cashier can swipe her card. Fresh phone, new SIM card, and she checks for the app. Can't find it. Starts to split, then boom, another ping. And the app's right there on the new device too. She grills the guy, he tries to nix it but can't. As she heads out, another customer hits the guy up about the app. Quinn's in her ride, peeping the app still ticking down. Then out of the blue, she spots this grim figure in her rearview camera, only visible there. All of a sudden, it snatches her from the backseat, and she slams into another car, tumbling out of her own. The dude from the other car starts hollering at her. While the store customer strolls out, shuts him down, and reveals he's got the app too. Later, they're kicking back in a bar, hashing it out. Quinn suggests they figure out a way to review the app's user agreement again, and Matt tells the wild dude in the bar to download it. They approach him, and as he hits the terms and conditions page, Quinn starts breaking them down. It spells out that they gotta embrace their destiny. The loony guy still gives the nod to the terms, and the app spills that he's got a shot at hitting 91. Quinn and Matt hit up the hospital, have a sit down with the priest. They throw the demon question at him, but he ain't buying it and ships them off to someone else. Before they bounce, Amy pulls Quinn aside for a chat. Matt hits the restroom. Someone's trying to bust into his stall, and he spots a barefoot kid peeking under the door. As he's scrubbing up, he catches the sound of someone sobbing in one of the stalls. When he checks it out, the barefoot kid's back, sauntering through the stalls like there's nothing in the way, stopping at the last one. The lights cut out, and Matt heads to scope the stall. Nothing there, but out of nowhere, something creeps up behind him, calling out his name. It jumps him, and when the lights flicker back on, it's vanished. Meanwhile, Amy drags Quinn into a powwow with HR and Dr. Sullivan. He spins it, saying she cornered him, not the other way around. HR dude drops the bomb she's getting suspended, but Quinn kicks into explaining her side of the story. Amy lays into her, but Quinn storms off. Matt's waiting, and he's tight-lipped about what went down. The voice of that thing that got him keeps echoing in his ears. They step into a church, on the hunt for the dude the other priest tipped them off about. Spot him in his office. And he's all hyped that they're asking about demons, instantly recalling an ancient tale. In this story, a prince scores a scroll from an old gypsy woman, spelling out the exact hour he's gonna bite it. She hits him with a warning not to mess with destiny, but, being a prince and all, he ignores it, circles back to the gypsy, claiming death's hot on his heels. She schools him that it's not death but a demon, geared to torment him until he clocks out, just like the scroll said. He dishes out advice, finds someone to hack the app. They roll up to Derek, the store guy, for backup, and grease his palms to get him on board. Dude's familiar with the app, throws shade at them for buying in but still hooks them up with the hack. The app's code is all in Latin. Inside that code, they uncover the countdowns for everyone hooked up to the app, Derek included. Dude tweaks all the settings for his countdown, then goes on the hunt for Quinn. When they spot her sister's countdown, it's almost synced with Quinn's, so Derek does a quick switcheroo. Jordan catches the adjustment on her phone, but the lady keeping tabs on her swipes it. Matt and Quinn give Derek props for the countdown tweaks as he peels out. Then, Quinn asks Matt to crash at her spot for the night. They're gearing up for bed, leaving the lights on cause they're still on edge. Matt spins a tale about his deceased brother, and Quinn reciprocates with her mom's story, both of them being no good even in death. 
They're bunking down, catching some Z's in the bed when the lights cut out. Quinn picks up on a noise at the room's entrance, tries to shake Matt awake, but it turns out the demon's the one sharing the bed with her. When the actual Matt uncovers her, poof, the demon's gone. The app still reverts to their initial countdown. Quinn gets a flashback to her sister's countdown. Meanwhile, Jordan's phone rings in the old woman's room, and she heads over to grab it. Turns out her countdown shifted when something pops up in front of her room. Jordan checks it out, and once again, the lights take a nosedive. She retreats to her room, shutting the door, only to find it wide open when she turns around. Opting for the under-the-bed hideout, she catches her mom's voice, asking for her sister. The bed gets a nudge, and suddenly, her departed mother materializes. Jordan bolts for the front door, where Quinn and Matt are already stationed. They circle back to the demon priest. He deciphers the Latin code for them, revealing it's a curse he can figure out how to break and lift. His game plan, keep one of them alive longer than the app predicts, thinking that'll bust the curse. The idea is to hunker down in a blessed circle of salt, holding out long enough to defy the app and break the curse. Quinn stirs the salt into the paint, and as they slap it onto the ground, the priest gives the salt a blessing. They finish painting the circle on the floor, and Matt checks his countdown timer. He steps back, nerves running high, but Quinn shuts it down with a kiss. The lights cut out, prompting them all to huddle inside the circle. As the demon inches closer, the priest goes into prayer mode. The demon materializes behind them but hits a roadblock at the circle's edge. The priest takes a shot at banishing it back to hell when the app starts blaring. Suddenly, a toy robot sneaks up to the circle, visible only to Matt. His brother shows up and tempts him out of the circle. The demon snatches him up and drags him away. Quinn dashes after him, catching up as Matt gets hit by a car, and he meets his end with the countdown. Jordan's injured, so Quinn rushes her to the hospital, while a doctor tends to her sister. A colleague spills the beans about knowing what went down with Dr. Sullivan, offering support if she decides to confront him. They share a hug, but Quinn spots the doctor chatting with her sister and heads in that direction. She expresses gratitude but hints at having some kind of plan. Jordan discloses that their mother's demise wasn't Quinn's fault, but Quinn insists it's on none of them. The two make amends, with Jordan suggesting they at least spend their final moments together. Quinn's not buying into the idea that they're destined to kick the bucket because she's got a game plan. She saunters into Dr. Sullivan's office, laying on the apologies and working her charm. He isn't fooled and demands to know what she's after. She throws out a request to reclaim her job, leading him into the closed wing. In no time, the doctor stumbles in, searching for her amidst the closed wing, spotting remnants of her clothing on the ground. Quinn's toying with him. Out of the blue, she smacks him with a wrench, aiming to jab him with morphine, but Jordan intervenes. The demon snatches the doctor away. Quinn's got this notion that offing the doctor before his countdown hits zero will shatter the curse, prompting her to track him down. Jordan's on the search too, her app flashing less than two minutes to go. Out of the blue, the demon materializes behind her. Simultaneously, Quinn's still on the doctor's tail when she catches a sound. He clocks her, aiming to finish her off, but she bounces back. She gives chase, yet the demon intervenes, shoving her aside, and the doctor slips away. Quinn's gears start turning, conjuring another plan. Meanwhile, Jordan's in a cat-and-mouse game with the demon, attempting to stay out of its clutches. She tries to lay low, but her app spills the beans on her location. An industrial freezer creaks open, and she investigates, only for the demon to seize her and hurl her through a window. With time ticking away and the demon closing in for the kill, Quinn strides onto the scene, wielding a syringe pressed to her skin, commanding it to release her sister. Jordan pleads with her to reconsider, and the demon shape shifts into their mother, diverting her focus. With the clock ticking for Jordan, Quinn momentarily loses focus. However, she quickly catches on and administers the morphine into Jordan's veins. Jordan passes away ahead of schedule, thwarting the demon's grasp. Having broken the demon's curse, Quinn's victory is bittersweet. Jordan, grieving over her sister's lifeless form, notices a drug name scrawled on Quinn's arm and a rolling bottle. She injects it into Quinn's arm, counteracting the morphine and miraculously resurrecting her. In the aftermath, Quinn, Jordan, and their father pay a visit to their mom's resting place. As they prepare to depart, a notification pops up on Quinn's phone, indicating the beta version of the countdown app has been installed. In a post-credits moment, Derek is spotted sharing a meal with a lady at a restaurant. His date, feeling let down, heads to the restroom before their departure. Suddenly, Derek receives a notification from the app, ticking down his remaining minutes. The lights flicker, and eerie demonic sounds echo, accompanied by Derek's distressed screams.